Hi folks, this is Jay. I'm at Jim's garden to show you how he used his magic to keep all the plants live forever so you don't have to purchase them again and again every season. So show us some of the things you have here. This is a uh, propagation station I uh, made and uh, is in my, my book, um, Harry Potter Herbology Magic. Um, this, I'd wanted to do this for years because it's the, the, the simplest, easiest way to get more plants. This is my uh, propagation station where I keep my uh, cuttings that I'll root in the basement to get these started for next year. Yeah, these have been out here for probably two weeks and they're already rooting, so by the time I take them downstairs, and these can stay outside until, yeah. you know. Oh, do you propagate by cutting very often, or uh, Yeah, because actually yeah. Uh, I have this vertical garden over here, and it used to be all succulents and uh, sedums, but uh, the succulents would, uh, you know, like maybe a third of them or a quarter of them would die each year, and I'd have to buy more. So I started taking cuttings put them in the propagation station and throwing them in this vertical garden. So I've got a lot of things that's going to die off. Uh, these oxalis will die off, the coleus will die off, but it fills in spots in right. the uh, vertical garden. Yeah, these I uh, actually uh, cut down uh, right to the, the, the base here and then I just cut them up in small pieces and put it in the composter. Yeah. And then so you use the string trimmer to I <laughs> blender. Use, well, yeah, uh, for a lot of the coleus and uh -huh. uh, the fall leaves, uh -huh. I put them in a, uh, a garbage bin and uh, just about, you know, a third full. Uh -huh. And then I put the weed whacker in there mm -hmm. and mix it up just to break everything down into small pieces. I used to uh, put everything in a big pile in the middle of the driveway and then mow it with my mower and just run over it the leaves and everything. But you, to, no, you no longer have a mower. <laughs> I got rid of the mower like 20 years ago. Okay, show us the plants by the shed. So are they going into the shed? Yeah, these are more uh, perennials. Uh, there's some hosta, some coral bells, and they're in pots that could uh, break again uh, during winter time. So they go in the shed just so that they're uh, more to protect the pots than the plants. Yeah, so most of the hosta, they're very cold hardy. So oh yeah, they, they expect to be snow covered. Mm -hmm. They uh, expect to be uh, uh, you know, frozen and, and go dormant. Uh, in the spring, what I do is uh, like the last snowfall of spring, mm -hmm. I'll uh, maybe, uh, my friend Gordon told me this, uh, put a snowball or two on the hostas inside the shed to get them reinvigorated for spring. Well, I still have, um, you know, elephant ears here uh, that have to be chopped down. Actually, these elephant ears, I'll probably take away half the leaves mm -hmm. and then put them in the basement to grow under grow lights. Okay. What I'll do with the, uh, uh, the elephant ears that are in the ground mm -hmm. in the backyard, I will take them out, cut them down, put them in the composter. The bulb I will take downstairs uh, and let it dry for a couple days mm -hmm. and then I'll pack it in like vermiculite or something uh, to keep it dry over the winter. Airy head. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, it's got to get some air. And then I'll just bring them out and I'll rebury them. And having done that for like three or four years now with these bulbs, the bulbs get bigger every year and healthier. But you also have some plants you do keep outside, right? I've got this dwarf ginkgo. Uh, this is in a, this I leave outside because it's in a cold hardy planter. Let's uh, move inside. So now we are inside. Yeah, it's part of the living room. It's a large room. It's the, actually the turret of the house, so it's the round part. It faces south. It's a greenhouse sort of uh, for the larger plants. The plants in this room I've had for a long, long time. Uh, even the, over there is an avocado tree that I've had for many years. I grew from a pit. As the plants are indoors now, they have to readjust to the light in here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them will lose a lot of leaves. Right. And they'll look worse by the time spring happens, but uh, they come back so fully in springtime that uh, whatever is lost now is no big deal. So the purpose is to keep them alive, barely yeah. alive. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the terrariums in the book. That so. is a Professor Sprout's classroom terrarium. That one I may have to get its own special grow light. And I've not had a problem with bugs really, so oh, that's not been an issue. You're lucky, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am lucky. Uh, Patty at Urban Roots gave me this tip um, to use rice husks um, and just put it over the soil because the bugs don't like that. 
um, so they won't come out of the soil or go into the soil. Mm. Uh, so this is the south facing window on the second floor. Yeah. So probably the brightest uh, window yes, in the house. Yes, it is, yeah. They need the most light they can get. I have little grow lights just over the terrariums themselves and they're all together. And yeah, those require specific lighting yeah. to make those work. All the rest of the plants are back here. This is a grow light setup area. Yeah, these are just cheap shop lights, like 20 bucks, uh -huh. less than 20 bucks from uh, Value Home Center. Uh -huh. um, and the one at the end is my first one. That's just fluorescent tubes. And I will probably set the same lights up on this side uh, because I've got more plants now. Yeah. and uh, they need to have a little bit more even light. But I have them on for uh, 10 hours a day. They're like house plants, basically in the basement, so I have to water them about once a week. Yeah. So with the grow light, what kind of uh, color temperature do you want to use for the light bar? I don't even know. <laughs> um, I was on an a, a online uh, thing this week, a Facebook group for uh, uh, plant people, and uh, they were suggesting you go out and buy these expensive lights and these temperatures, and it's like, these shop lights have worked fine for me for about five to eight years. Uh -huh. um, so I, I've never wanted to spend, you know, $100 on one light. Uh -huh. um, I'd rather spend $18 on a light. And uh, the plants, you know, they seem to do okay. So I, I like to make, keep my plants year after year, and I don't want to have to spend a lot of money to do it. Exactly. And, uh, but it's not just about saving money. If you are willing to spend the time, you can turn for example, a typical lantana into a bonsai. Yeah, yeah. Th yeah this one in particular, uh, I've had for probably almost a dozen years. Yeah. And it's, uh -huh. uh, as long as I can overwinter it, it just keeps getting uh, stronger and stronger each year. And then I prune it a little, a little each year uh, just to keep a shape to it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of become its own uh, bonsai lantana. They will adjust to the light they're getting, so they'll lose a lot of leaves. Uh -huh. And by spring, it'll look almost dead. Uh -huh. uh, it don't, it, it's looked very dead in past okay. years. Uh -huh. And I bring it out and it, they always come back. I've got two of them, the other one's at the other end. Uh, but they always come back. And that's the other thing you'd mentioned earlier about uh, humidity. Uh -huh. I could really use more humidity down here. Uh, a lot of the leaves will start, uh, the, the leaves that stay, uh -huh. uh, will start to brown on many of the plants. Uh -huh. um, but until I figure out what I want to do, I could just enclose the space with plastic, I suppose. Oh. Um, and, uh, you know, keep some trays of water around yeah. to evaporate and stay in the room. And another benefit from overwintering some of the plants is, for example, for some of the Rex begonia, usually they wouldn't flower. But if you overwinter them, some of the Rex begonia, they would flower. I get right? flowers on my begonias quite yeah. often, yeah. yeah. I mean, the same thing happens with Creeping Jenny. If you buy the Creeping Jenny from nursery, you don't get any flower within the season. But uh, if it's an old Creeping Jenny, they will have this yellow flower. A good tip on the Christmas cactus, that's the last plant I bring in because if you bring that in right before the first frost, you've got a greater chance of having buds on it. 